What's up everybody? On today's video I'm going to be building two tabletops or workstations. One's going to be built as a torsion box style and the other one's going to be two laminated pieces of plywood. And the reason why I'm building two is I want to compare the difference between how flat one style is over the other. And the reason why I'm doing that is you can see my outfit table here. I built this about three years ago and I use it as my only assembly table as well and I notice there's a dip in the middle and because there's a dip a lot of my pieces of furniture had uh, some crookedness to it or uh, a bit of a bow after I flattened it so I wanted to be able to build something more dedicated and flat as a reference oh, safety first by the way this is half inch MDF for the ribs of the torsion box Let's do the video. Okay, we are building a torsion box, and one of the things you need in building a torsion box is a reference, a flat reference level. And uh, my concrete floor is definitely not level after I built these cabinets. I can tell that by how many shims they used. And what I want to do is I have some saw horses here. I milled down some two by fours to get them flat and parallel. Um, and I am going to place them uh, on the concrete here and I will shim up accordingly to get these dead flat so I can put a um, half inch MDF board on there to start building out my torsion box. So let's see if this works. Here we're going to lay the saw horses out uh, lengthwise to ensure we get as much coverage for the MDF to have support. And we're going to take those two by fours that were milled to be perfectly flat to ensure that we get a consistent surface across the board. They are not all the same height. Uh, the floor is not level. I think I'm going to try to use my laser level to get them all to the rough height and then I'll do some shimming. We'll see if that speeds up the process. Now that we have the laser level all done and all the 2x4s are roughly the same height. I'm taking some shims to get it perfectly flat across the board. Uh, there's no bumps. So when we lay the MDF down on the base, it doesn't uh, bow at all. And here I'm actually going to take the two half inch MDF boards and get them together and cut them down to size. Um, kind of do this in reverse just to make it easier when I handle the boards um, that they're both the same size and just recently for Christmas my wife bought me a new track saw extender and I'm very happy about it because uh, this is the first project I get to use it for it's gonna allow me to make safe cuts safe straight cuts across the board for full sheets of material as you can see here boom straight and dusty I love MDF. Now I'm breaking it down to, I think it's about three and a half feet by seven feet. Odd the dimensions in the base here. Uh, this is my wife here helping me move the table and she bumped <laughs> the level, but I came back and ensured that we're still good. Now I'm gonna rip down the external part of the torsion box. I'm using actually three quarter inch MDF to make the exterior uh, a little stronger and more for um, its rigidity. Rigidity. I did it again. And I am going to mill these down to the uh, exact dimensions for the exterior. Now I'm going to put these at the edges here and I am going to actually ensure uh, that they stay parallel to the edge. Um, so I can have a uh, kind of square square aspect as I go through the entire build and putting in the the ribs. And it'll make sense once I get the squares on there because it can start to shift if you don't have them. Now right here, this is kind of setting the, the base here. So I have an L shape uh, ensuring that I have squareness. So I have a reference point as I push the boards into the left side, I have something that I know that is exactly a 90 degree down the base of the torsion box. Now what you see right here is me putting the glue on the individual ribs 
This is what comprises the strength uh, between a torsion box and its ability to also keep the depth of the table. And here I'm putting in, you can see a more full version of what these kind of honeycomb uh, or rigid squares uh, comprises of. And I'm toenail uh, stapling these in to ensure that they stay uh, straight across the board. Now the strength of this is comprised of the outer skins as it glues to the ribs. And right here you can see me I'm about to glue on the bottom piece. This right here is going to allow the strength to come in as it glues to each individual rib. And I'm going to mark these across the board where those lines are underneath so I can ensure that I get a proper uh, nail adhesion here uh, across the board. Now, probably in the future, if I build a, another one, I'll use this table as a reference, and I will probably stand on top of it uh, to ensure I get full suction, but uh, I think that's good enough. In my first video, uh, this is my second one, so I'm starting out, but I'm building out, I built out a miter station, and I just want to make a call out here. Um, this has been a game changer for me. I used to hate using my miter uh, saw station, um, really it's just a platform. And with this stop block, uh, I'm able to rip down boards super quick, accurate, and this is great for building bases uh, for tables. So beyond excited, I'll put a link in the top right corner so you can take a look at that video. Now to move further in the process of building this base and ripping them down, I want to get one straight edge so when I break them down at the table saw, uh, they are square. And I'm going to rip them down into... This is the legs, uh, five and a half by uh, three and a half, so I come up to more traditional two by four size. Now, after I get that cut, I come back to the miter saw to ensure that I get them to the final depth, and they're all square. Let's see how fast I go here. This is in real time. Just kidding. Now we are all done. Jump shot. Now we're on to moving on the gluing of the legs. And you can see I have my 2x4 on the outer edge of the 2x6. And this will comprise the four corners of the torsion box legs. And then as those glue, I'm going to come back here and route out the excess because I made it slightly oversized. Um, by the way, MDF is nasty, dusty. Here we are, I'm gonna mill out the trim. Uh, I'm just using some maple for the outer edge of the torsion box just to put more um, support or durability in the outer edge of it because I'm gonna use this as an assembly table so things will be bumping in and out. Um, so I wanna ensure I protect it. And here I am ripping down a straight edge using my track saw. Um, just a little bit quicker than probably using a jointer. Is it dead flat? Probably not, but close enough. Now I'm going to rip these down to the depth of the table, which I believe is about four inches. And we are all set. Next, we're going to get into the right dimension, uh, or thickness uh, rather. Um, I got them to three quarter inch um, thickness and then I'm using here a Rockler uh, drill guide. Uh, whenever you have a long piece, I do have a drill press but it is really nice to have this on hand to ensure that we have kind of a straight 90 degree drill um, and it's good with long pieces. And here I am screwing in into the sides of the torsion box and I'm gonna come back with some glue and dowels just to hide those screws to make it look a little more pretty because uh, you don't need pretty shop furniture and I'm gonna come back after they dry and cut them down with a flush um, flush trim saw and zip zap zoop there we go and Instead of just sanding forever, I take a sharp chisel, come over, kind of peel off the edges, and I come back with a 220 grit just real quick, just kind of sand it down 
nice and smooth. Looks great. Now I made the sides a little proud or taller than the tops of the board and I wanted to do that so I can shave down or sand down. I chose to use my hand plane here just to go old school uh, to get it flat but now that it's perfect it's time to do my favorite thing which is put laminate on the top. And floop. There you go. And contact cement is the key to go here. Um, in my last video, I did that on the countertops there, so you can just check out that link if you want to watch a more kind of more detailed breakdown of this. But I do have a little bit longer section showing me here, going through the process and getting it all nice and tacky, and wrapping up the top here and pulling it out and doing the rub down, the laminate rub down. Now I made this a little bit like full size so I didn't worry about like breaking it down and scoring it. I wanted to try something new and just take a router to the edge to see if I can kind of speed up the process and it worked just fine. No chip outs, nothing. Um, yeah, I don't think you really need to score down unless it's like a fairly large, you know, like two foot extension where it starts to bend considerably, um, you can get around that. Next we're taking a 45 degree chamfer here to the edges to make them nice and soft so when you bump into it, it doesn't hurt. Nice and smooth. Now that I have a dead flat surface, I'm going to use my assembly table to actually assemble the base. On to the base build. Now I'm going to glue and screw these to ensure I can move a little quicker. However, uh, ensure that you have um, a good 90 degree so as you go throughout building each component, it all ties in fairly well and you're not have to work really hard to get it back to square. Now I like to drill first, then screw, just to ensure I'm not splitting any wood. Um, but to each of their own, if you want to go quick, just go straight into it. Now at the base of these, I'm using a three and a half inch block, you can see down there at the edge, to ensure that I have plenty of room for uh, my toes to kind of sink in underneath and I'm not bumping my feet all the time. And this is where I want to have the base for uh, my base, base for base, and do the same process here, screw, or drill, and screw, and I'm going to put a support here at the middle of it to prevent any sagging. Um, I know I built a torsion box, it can probably withstand its own weight, but why not make it a little bit stronger, and also I have the opportunity to create a divider in the base so I can have uh, cabinets built into it in the future. I'm not going to do it in this video just for the sake of time and that could be a future project. Now I took the block here again at the very uh, bottom of the base to ensure that I had the same three and a half inches here and I put the clamp a little bit at an angle to compress that appropriately. And drill and screw. I go through like a whole entire box of screws. Um, worth it. And now I'm going to do the bottom of it. Looks like top. Oop, don't drop that. And same process here. I actually went in and put clamps on everything first before I glued in each individual piece. So that way I'm working with exactly a square base here. Just all about prevention and ensuring that you have the right set up as you go through the process uh, so it's just easier as you go and put in the last ones this is going to be the top of the base I just flip down still using the reference of the the flat table here and putting those in I'm putting pocket screws but by, by the way if you haven't noticed 
all the screws are on the inside. You know, just a little detail to make it look more pretty. We're still going on that pretty uh, theme here for furniture, um, shop furniture. And here's my first thing I built three years ago. Uh, still a workhorse. I'll probably update it in the future, but um, time to clean up under that junk that's been there and collecting. Gotta have a clean, clean spot when you start. Whoop. And my wife for the rescue here, helping me with the base, bring it over. Nice and level. Um, close. Gotta do a few little shims. Not too bad. Um, and we're set. She helped me back over with the portion box, put it on, and teamwork. Now that I got it all square to the dimensions I want, um, I use those middle crossbars to sink them into the base of the, the table to ensure that it doesn't move around as I work on it. It's all about that good, good back form. Good. Whew. Now, I'm not going to go super into detail on this next part. Um, it's just gluing two table or two three quarter inch MDF boards. Um, and I'm not going to show the base piece of it because you've already seen that part of the, the build. Uh, but I will show you how I glue up this and some of the benefits of doing it in this order. So, just to speed up the process, I'm marking out every six inches it's just a guess uh, I feel like that gives you good kind of uh, clamping power as you go through this without having a, a ton of weights that you can press on top of it and then I do the favorite thing we all love is just douse a lot of glue and use a roller uh, this will speed up the process tremendously because um, that glue sets pretty quick and once we're done there uh, we'll do a flip over and I like to get it kind of squared up so I don't have to do that much trimming up on the edges. And I'll put some clamps on it to ensure as I screw it down it doesn't move on me. And you go to town. Once this draws, let's do some testing, see what it's better. So this is my torsion box. And this is the dedicated assembly table uh, that I wanted to use uh, going forward. But I did build a secondary table for... Um, more or less support for my planer and jointer because uh, I have bench top ones. But testing this method, I got a sheet of paper, so ultra thin, and then I got the 1 16th inch ruler. I can go ahead and tell you that nowhere along the line, the 16th of an inch goes into this table. Um, and if I do the piece of paper, it is about the same. Um, so there is no bow in this table for the torsion box. There is a little bit right here. And that is it. Not perfect, but incredibly flat. Okay, so here is my support table for planer and my jointer. Same base structure as my torsion box. Only difference is this table is two sheets of three quarter plywood laminated together. And this took a day, that took about three days. So let's see if those extra three days makes a difference. Um, so I feel pretty confident that this thickness of this ruler, which is about a sixteenth of an inch, doesn't go in anywhere. In comparison, it looks pretty good. Yeah, so we're good there. Now, if I take the sheet of paper and let's do the same test. Let's get a unbent corner there. Looks pretty good. That right there. And then let's check this other way. 
right there. Yeah. So it might be fixed by leveling the legs a little bit better, but you can see this table is not much different than the torsion box. Um, so if you're in a pinch, uh, one day or three days, uh, you know, could be a big deal. Um, and I think the cost is a little bit more. Um, I will have a link down in the comments uh, to my breakdown of all the materials and costs. Um, and I would call plan light uh, so you can get the dimensions, but fit it to your own needs. I appreciate you for watching this week's video and I uh, hope you follow more for building some fine furniture. So I'm going to shift over from shop furniture to actually building out um, uh, furniture in the home. So. Appreciate it. <laughs> that way, and then you're gonna pivot around. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Pivot. Yeah, pivot. Okay, don't kick anything. <laughs> Did you really? No. Oh my goodness. Well, my foot did hit it. <laughs> <laughs> But like a tapping. That's, that's that stuff matters. <laughs> 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 <laughs>